Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's write some more neat code today. Today, let's solve one of my favorite interview questions, maximal square. According to leak code, it's asked by a few companies, including Google and also including Huawei. So I like it because it's actually a pretty simple problem. So we're given an M by N matrix, right? So in this case, it's five by four and it's filled with some zeros like this one and some ones like this one. We just want to find the largest square we can create that contains only ones and then return the area. So if we look at the drawing, like this is one square, right? Because it's one by one, but this is not a square, right? It's one by two. That's not a square. It's a rectangle, but not a square. We have one two by two square over here and we have another two by two square over here. We can also make this three by two, but that's not a square, so we don't count it. So the biggest square we can make is a two by two. So we know that the area is gonna be four, which is what we return. So it's pretty easy when you're looking at a picture, right? Like when you just look at this, you can tell that this is the biggest square we can make. But how do you do this with an algorithm? Well, in this case, we have a four by three grid, right? What's the what's one brute force way we could do this? Well, let's consider for each of our one by one cells, let's consider that this was the top left corner of our square. What's the largest square we can make where this one is considered the top left? Well, clearly we can at least make a one by one square with this, right? Because this is a one. So what happens if we try to see if we can make a two by two square where this one is the top left? Well, what do we have to do? We have to check, okay, can we at least make a one by one over here? And can we at least make a one by one over here? And can we at least make a one by one over here? We see that this one is not a one. So then what does that tell us? That tells us if this is the top left corner, then the, the greatest area we can do is one by one, which is also just one, right? And what we can do now is basically repeat that process for every single cell in the grid. So for this one, we see it's a zero. So we can't even make a one by one square with this. So we don't even have to check the neighbors. Now, this method is going to require some nested loops, right? So some for loops, some more for loops. We're going to have to, starting at each one, we're going to potentially have to go through the entire grid. And the time complexity of that is going to be, let's say that the width is M and the length is N. So that's going to be M times N because we're going to have to go through the entire grid, right? So we're going to go through the, the whole grid and we're going to do that for every single cell in the grid. So it's M by N squared. That's pretty inefficient, right? Big O of this is not that great. So is there some way that we can do better than this? So with a problem like this, it's good to ask, is there any repeated work that we're doing? Or even can we break this down into sub problems? So if we're looking for the largest square that we can make where this is the top left corner, we know that if, if theoretically, just looking at the grid, the largest would be a three by three, right? Because that's the biggest square we can even make starting up here. What about this one? This, theoretically, the biggest we can make over here is a two by two because there's not even any space down here. If we try extending it to the right, it's no longer a rectangle. It's no longer a square, right? If we want the largest square we can make starting up here, Let's first check down here. What's the largest square we can make starting over here? And let's also ask what's the largest square we can make where this is the top left corner. And also we know that we got to check this one too. What's the top? What's the largest square we can make starting here? So we're breaking this down into sub problems, right? If we want to solve the problem up here, 
then we have to solve the subproblems as well. And if we want this one, if we want to know the largest square we can make starting at where this is the top left, we got to check down here. We got to check diagonally over here. What's the largest square we can make where this is the top left? And we also have to check over here, but you see we already did that. So this is the repeated work. We don't have to check this twice. So the solution to that is I'm going to create a cache. And if we want to know what's the largest square we can make from here, we also have to check the subproblems. Now notice we go down here. Well, we don't need to go here twice, right? We already went here starting from this direction. So we don't have to repeat this work. This is repeated work. So I don't have to check down here again, but I do have to look over here. I have to know what's the largest square I can make from this position as the top left. And I also have to check over here because we have not checked this one yet either. Now, last but not least, we have to look at this one as well. We to, to make this as large as it can be, we have to check below it, but we know we already did that. We have to check diagonally, but we see we already did that. And we also have to check to the right, which we have not done yet. Now, just bear with me a little bit longer because we're almost done. So starting from here, we have to check below it, but we see there's nothing there. We have to check diagonally, but we see there's nothing there. We have to check to the right, but we see we already did that. And now starting from here, we're going to do the exact same thing. And the process is repeating, right? We, see, we go here. We already checked that. We don't have to. So starting from here, we go below diagonally and to the right, which we have not checked yet. But we can see we're starting to get to the base case, right? And then we just have to do these two as well. We look down, we are, we've already visited that. We check diagonally, we've already visited this. We go to the right, we have not visited this yet. And this is the last one we have to look at. We look below, we've already visited that. Diagonally, we've already visited that to the right. We have not visited this. And now we don't have to check any of these because they're not real cells. This one will look below. We've already done that diagonally. There's nothing there to the right. There's nothing there. So what does that tell us about this cell? So I'm actually going to draw the output, right? I'm going to draw our cache and what this cache represents. This cache is going to represent for each of these rect uh, each of these cells what's the max area we could get where this is the top left position when we look at this one we see there's no space there's no cells anywhere whether there's zero or one there's nothing here so the largest we can make at this position is a one by one and the area of that is going to be one now let's look at this one we're going to be going in reverse order, right? So we're going to start with these red ones. Then we're going to look at the pink ones. Then we're going to look at these dark blue ones. And then finally, we're going to get to the top leftmost position. So we're going to look at this in reverse order and see what happens. So for this one, it has nothing to the right, nothing diagonally. It does have a one below it. So we see that we can't make anything bigger than a one by one over here. So in this position, we're also going to put length one. So for this cache, I'm actually going to put the square length, not the area itself, just because it's a little bit easier. Lastly, we check this one. We know that there's a one below it, but there's nothing diagonally and there's nothing to the right. So the largest we can make with this is a one by one. So this is part of our base case. Now we're going to start looking at these pink ones and let's start over here. So we know there's nothing below. There's nothing diagonally. There is a one to the right, but the most we can do with this is a one by one. The exact same thing is going to hold true for this one. We can only make a one by one and the exact same thing is true for this one. We can only make a one by one. 
Next, we look at this zero. Now, this is the interesting part. If we look below, there is a one. If we look diagonally, there is a one. If we look to the right, there's also a one, but this is a zero. So starting at the top left with this, we can't even make a one by one. So we're gonna have to put a zero here. The last pink one that we have to check is up here. We know there's a zero below it. There's a one diagonally and there's a one to the right. Unfortunately, this zero limits us. So the most we can make with this as the top left is going to be one. Now we're gonna start looking at these dark blue ones. Starting with this one, we look below, there's a one. We look diagonally, there's a one. And we look to the right and there's a one. And also, the value in this cell itself is also a one, so we know that this is a two by two. Next, we look at this one. Below, there's a one. Diagonally, there's a one, but to the right, there's a zero. This is getting really messy now, but we're almost done. So we know that at this position, the top left we can do is a one. And for this zero, we know we don't even have to check down right diagonally because this is a zero. The largest we can do is a zero. Okay, and the last one we have to check is the top leftmost one. We're gonna do that last. We look below, and actually you can check over here. We know that the biggest you can make here is a two by two. The biggest over here you can make is a one by one. The biggest you can make here is a zero. So since there's at least a one here though, we know we can put a one here. So now we've transformed this into new matrix will tell us for each position what's the max square we can make at that position as the top left corner and now we can just basically iterate through each position by checking each one this is a one zero one one this is a two this is a one zero one 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 so we know that the biggest is two so therefore the max area is going to be two by two because it is a square and we know two by two is four. And because we are using a cache, so we're not repeating work, even though in the picture it looked like we were repeating a lot of work, we're not actually doing that. So the time complexity is actually going to be M times N because we're really just scanning through each position in the matrix. And then when we have our output, we're also doing that same thing. We're just checking each position to find what the maximum is. So now let's code it up and you might have noticed that this is a dynamic programming problem. It can be solved with dynamic programming which is considered bottom up I think. And we can also do it recursively. In that case, it's top down. Most people will just skip to the, to the dynamic programming solution, so I'm actually just gonna show you the recursive one. So first, I'm just gonna get the dimensions of this matrix, just so we can store them when we don't have to keep getting them. So to get the number of rows, we can just get the length of this matrix, and to get the number of columns, we can get the length of one of the rows. Also, we know we're gonna be doing some repeated work, so we're gonna store the result of that work in a cache. This is a hash map in Python. And we're gonna map each position, so each row column position, to the max area of that position, basically. And I'm gonna do this recursively. Since our original function, max square, only takes one parameter of the matrix, I'm gonna get a helper function that we can pass in the row column position as well. We don't have to pass in the matrix because we can access that because this is a nested function basically, right? So as in most recursive functions, first I'm gonna check the base case. If our row is out of bounds, so if R is greater than the number of rows we have or if the column is out of bounds, we know that the max area we can get is zero or even the max length. Now, if this row column pair is in bounds, first we're gonna check if it hasn't already been computed and stored in our cache. If it has, then we know we can just say this, right? Return cache uh, of that position, row column pair, meaning we already computed 
the max area at this position. But if that's not the case, so if row column is not in the cache, then we have to compute it. Now, how are we gonna compute it? Just like we did in the example, we're gonna look, first we're gonna look down. So we're gonna recursively call our helper function in the down position. How do we get that? Well, we can just add one to the row because adding one takes us down a position and we can stay at the same column. We also wanna check the right position. What's the max area we can get in the right position? So recursively, we will leave the row the same, but we're gonna increment the column so we can check the right position. Lastly, we also wanna check diagonally, meaning bottom right, so down right, which we can increment both variables. So remember when we call this function, we're trying to cache what's the max area in this position. Initially, we can just say zero, right? That's just the initial value I'm gonna give, but how do we compute it? How do we know if it's more than zero? So this is one little tricky part. You have to notice that in our matrix, these are actually strings. So each one and zero is a string, it's not an integer. So we gotta do some annoying stuff. So first we wanna check at this row column position, is there a one or a zero in our matrix? So we can check if matrix at row column is equal to one, is equal to one, but this is a string, so we gotta put some quotations around it. So if it's a one, that means that this area is at least a one, or the length is at least a one. So what we're gonna do is say, okay, cache in this position is at least one plus whatever the minimum of these three is, right? Because if one of them is a zero, then the max we can create is a one here. But if all of them are one, if there's a one in the down position, a one in the right position, and a one in the diagonal position, then this is gonna be one plus one, right? So in Python, it's pretty easy. I can just take the minimum of three values down, right, diagonal. And I actually made a slight uh, miscommunication. So we said we were gonna map these to the max area, but I'm actually gonna say the max length of the square. So I hope that's not too confusing. So in this case, if there's a one here and the minimum of these three is a one, then we're gonna store a two in this position. But what that means is the max square we can get is two times two, which is gonna be four. So now we've defined our helper function, but we haven't actually called it yet. So I'm gonna call it first. I'm gonna call helper passing in the top left position, which is zero, zero, because we're going top down recursively. And once this function has been called, we know that our cache is filled with, for each position we've mapped it to the max length of the square at that position. So if I get all the values we have in our cache, meaning all of the lengths that we computed, that's what this gives us. So cache.values is giving us a list of basically all of the max lengths. I can take the max of that entire thing, so the max of every position, and then I can square it because we know this is the length, not the area, so we're gonna square it, and then all I have to do is return this value. And I also wanna say that the time complexity is big O of M by N. Since we're also use, using a cache, we also have extra memory complexity, which is big O M by N as well. I'll say that the dynamic programming solution, once you know how to do this, is not much more difficult. You don't need to do it recursively. You can use a loop and you can go bottom up. So. And you can also actually use the matrix itself as the cache in a way, which saves you a bit of memory. So we basically get rid of one of these dimensions for memory if you're doing the dynamic programming solution. I hope this was helpful. It's a tricky problem, but it's a common interview question. And I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.